Bien, como os decía, eh, esta mesa eh, se titula El papel de las agencias de viajes y tour operadores en el turismo accesible de cruceros. Hablaremos, por lo tanto, de la, de la intermediación. Y, y la modera, Gerda Van Land, eh, directora de eh, Baiten Gebon Reisen. Espero haberlo pronunciado bien. ¿Sí? Gracias. Eh, Gerda, eh, consciente eh, de los retos a los que se enfrentan las personas usuarias de silla de ruedas cuando quieren desplazarse, y después de haber estado trabajando en el sector del turismo casi eh, 25 años, hace 15 años creó una empresa que hoy en día ofrece en su web eh, información sobre alojamientos, eh, cruceros, safaris y viajes adaptados para personas en silla de ruedas, en numerosos lugares del mundo. Lugares inspeccionados personalmente para garantizar calidad y veracidad de la información. Gerda, cuando quieras. Ok. Now, first of all, uh, Predev, thank you very, very much for having us here and to arrange all the people together, us here on stage and here, I think we are a little bit tired in the end of the afternoon. But uh, I like it uh, that we and that Predev brought everyone together. Uh, and besides the roundtable um, uh, panel discussions here, I like to meet each other uh, somewhere in the restaurant or during the cafes. So, but first of all, um, um, I like to have the compliments not only for the Predev, but also for Spain. I think Spain and also Germany are far ahead in Europe Uh, in accessible travel and um, we heard that today and I can see it in the last 15 years that it really improved. So well, now I will uh, introduce you to the, to the panel that I have here. Uh, next to me you find Miriam. We, I decided to only give the first names, that's the most important to remember. So Miriam is here from Barcelona, from, uh, sorry Miriam, now I have to do this. <laughs> Barcelona from Disabled Accessible Travel. Uh, next to Miriam is Veronique. She is the CEO of Accessible Travel in the Netherlands. And Malik is the director of the cruise division of the Avorit Group, B, the travel brand. Joanne is from uh, the Barcelona for All Needs. And last but not least is Vittorio, the CEO of Cozy for You. And I will give first the word to... Uh, oh yeah, and we, of course, like to to talk about uh, how important is the role of tour operators and uh, travel agencies in this business, in the accessible travel business. So first of all, I'd like to give the word to Miriam. Yeah. Is everybody still awake? <laughs> <laughs> Más o menos, vale. <laughs> okay. Let me first see if this works. Vale, estamos. Okay, I'm Miriam. Uh, I work for Disabled, or I own actually Disabled Accessible Travel. Um, long story short, we already started in 2004, believe it or not, with just some walking, rolling tours in the old town. That was not me doing that, but it was my colleague. And look at where we are now. Uh, first of all, a whole group of people within Europe, all in one way or the other, related to accessible travel. Um, and us, we cover now currently the whole European segment, basically, with regarding to European accessible and the various services that we offer. Um, I don't think I have been as long in this market as maybe some of these people in the room, which I generally always find an advantage because it basically makes that you still feel surprised um, when you see things, how things go. It also means that you still see where there's room for improvement and maybe where there's some gaps and there's opportunities. Um, in Dutch, we call that looking from the outside in. I'm not sure if that's a good English impression, but it basically means that you're looking from the outside to another world. Uh, so we have created or basically signed up some findings, which we have noticed over the past two years. Um, which we would like to discuss today. Then, we have split these over four categories, being transfers, cruise ports, mobility equipment, and, of course, shore excursions. 
And to start with the last, um, what we hear a lot from our travelers, and I basically say complaints, is that we have many, many people frustrated because of last minute cancellations. So we have people going on a cruise, they did their homework, they prepared well, they signed up for a shore excursion, only to find out that last minute everything is cancelled. Um, as we just heard, there are about 5,000 people that can dock in one port, which basically makes it impossible, let's just say challenging, uh, to find a suitable tour of shore excursion um, that suits their needs. Most especially, there is no, there is no one size fits all. Uh, if I only look at Barcelona, for instance, um, being one of the most accessible destinations in Europe, we always need to know the dimensions of the wheelchair or the mobility equipment, because not every wheelchair fits every adapted taxi. That means that people can call, but maybe it means that they don't fit in the vehicle. Um, also, if you go on a tour, um, we heard it already today, we cannot use any other itinerary. The tours need to be adjusted. It means that we sometimes need alternative routes. We need to know where the stairs are. We need to know if there are roadblocks. We need to know if there's a different enter entrance to enter a museum. Maybe going the other way around instead of the ordinary way. So people and guides and drivers know, need to know where to stop and need to know where to enter. Accessible toilets, uh, don't get me started here. Um, we speak about it a little bit later. Uh, there's a very wide concept about what is an accessible toilet. Let's just forget that discussion for the moment, but the guides need to know where the toilets are. Sounds like a very simple thing. It's not really the case. Then, uh, we already mentioned this before, transfers. Um, it still amazes me that there are no adapted taxis waiting at most of the cruise ports, airports, etc. Which basically means that there's no room for any spontaneity. Everything needs to be booked in advance. It's not the case for everywhere, but it's the case in most destinations that we serve. Equipment rental. We notice many people prefer to rent equipment on site. <laughs> Why? Various reasons. They don't like to take it with them. It gets dam damaged during the flight. Anyway, they prefer to rent it here. Um, in Barcelona, even, we have port authority to deliver inside the cruise cabin, which is quite unique. However, the amount of paperwork that we need to fill in, or the customer needs to fill in, not us, in order to get that piece of equipment inside the cruise cabin, which is what people want, because we don't want to set a meeting point, maybe they miss their flight, or there's a bit of a delay, they don't know if their mobility equipment is there, it's so much easier and less stressful if mobility equipment is set in the cabin. So people check in, the things are there, and they can start their holiday. However, the amount of paperwork is putting people off. Let's just say making them stressful, also making them having to use it via the cruise liners, which is, let's just say, less, accessible, less uh, economical, and therefore much less accessible in that sense of the word as well to many, many people. One of my biggest surprises up until today is that, when we go to the cruises part, is that the Accessible shore excursions sometimes are just not offered. We deal with many people who've taken cruises for the past six years, um, and when speaking them, to them, it seems that even f if they had like itineraries docking in six ports, there was just no offering of any accessible shore excursion. And I'm not talking about the exquisite <laughs> tours here, just a simple offering. Um, additionally, if people want to visit a city by themselves, so they don't want to be depending on a tour company. They just want to go from the ship to the city or to a certain point of public transport from there, they can explore the city. We do have cruise buses. However, not all cruise buses are wheelchair accessible. So that means that they're still stuck on that ship. Or they need to call that adapter taxi, along with all the other 5,000 people docking on that port and hoping to find one. The last one. Tender boats. Um, I'm not sure if anyone knows what a tender boat is, but it's when the big cruise ships cannot get into the port. They, how do you say? They stop um, and it's just outside of the port, and they have these tender ships, the smaller ships, to get people from the ship to the port. Why can we get 5,000 people from one side of the world to here, but we cannot get one wheelchair on a tender boat? 
people are stuck. So this also, and that's also a very important point to make for travelers itself, because we also have many travelers booking their crews, not looking any further, they like the ports of call, only to find out that maybe four out of the six are tender. So it does require research from the customer side as well. My question is always, why is that the case? I'm just really interested why that is the case. When we are all here. Um, now, we don't have the illusion that all of us here can resolve all those problems. I mean, we all have our circle of influence, to say the least. Um, but we do have some ideas, at least, of things that we find useful um, on how to at least deal with it if we cannot overcome it. We said it before, there is not one size fits all. Um, I do think in the future, the answer would be that there is a less gap between accessible tours and standard tours. We are not there just now. I think we need to go there, but that's a long way. But right now, it's it's quite complicated to treat accessible tours as standard tours. So keep this in mind when booking a, a tour for a, cruise, uh, for a wheelchair user. Oh. Then, we have many people, travelers, who like to research as part of their holiday preparation uh, the options in each port. So some people just don't. What we find very useful um, is if we know the customer, we know what their needs are, we know what their limitations are, uh, we know what their uh, disability is, what their wheelchair size is, or the scooter um, information, that we can suit those needs and take those needs and basically match it in every port of call that we serve within Europe to a certain service provider or partner we work with. So we have quite a few people in every port. Um, we do have our preferred suppliers, of course. However, if we know the customer, it's better to make a match so everybody gets the most out of their holiday. Then, itineraries and toilets. Um, itineraries, we already said it before. The guides that we work with need to know how to go. They need to know where to avoid the steps. Like I said, if there are roadblocks, where are the, the elevators? Where are the steps? Uh, the biggest issue that I've found for the past two years is the complete lack of accessible toilets. We deal with many customers over the years, and... When I speak with customers, they're not worried about their trip. They're not worried about their cruise. However, when I got the, the next question, Miriam, where can I find to the toilet when they have spent all this money on a tour? And they're not asking me about the Colosseum. They're not asking me about Acropolis. No, they're asking me, where can I go to the toilet? A friend of mine, she's Bulgarian. She said, there's a, there's a Dutch, there's a Bulgarian saying, saying, a king can wait, but a toilet cannot. Now, this does not sound good in English. Sounds all the very better in Bulgarian, which I do not speak, because then it rhymes. But the essence is the same. Not being able to go to the toilet is a huge deal breaker. So we've made uh, Accessaloo in order for, to users to find accessible toilets, to add accessible toilets, including pictures, so people know where to go on the go, basically. Um, not only for the travelers, but also for the guides and for the drivers. This one, we've called it customer satisfaction. However, I prefer to refer to it as collaboration. We work with many people within Europe, and there are many, many, many good agencies, guides, transport companies, DMCs out there. We also notice that everybody's very much focused on their own market, and it's difficult to share. I've always learned if you cannot share, you can never grow. One and one is three, another thing I've always learned. I'm very Dutch, so you're going to learn a whole lot of Dutch expressions today. <laughs> then, one and one is three when it comes to collaboration. So, with everyone we work with, be it a taxi driver, be it a guide, in one way or the other, the conversation always ends up with the one plus one plus one is three. Uh, sorry, two. One plus one is three. That means the travel agencies the service partner, and not in the least the customer. Because if everybody's happy, we all win. Uh, and I believe, and we can all grow, not in the least. In terms in, in customer base, in terms in destinations that we serve. Um, so it's a win-win-win situation. And I believe that is the biggest challenge when it comes to accessible travel, basically. So be it in the cruising industry, or be it in the land-based land uh, services. And that is also why I like this event. Uh, I think there's been quite a lot of repetition today, but I always find that in fact is always in the repetition. So maybe in the end we'll learn from this. But it brings a whole lot of people from different spectrums together 
eventually all responsible in one way or the other for that one shore excursion. So, collaboration. Then, what do we do? Um, as everybody travels differently, we try to suit everybody's needs. If I travel, I like to know where I spend my money and how. So that is why we split the services up. So people can say, I just want this transfer, and you can take me into the city, I will find my own way. Or you can say, take them, or they prefer to you that you take them by the hand, and you arrange the whole trip from A to B. So instead of focusing on fixed travel packages, we decided to do the individual services. So this way, the customer does not only control his own money, but he also controls his own holiday. Then, something we've missed, or I have missed this whole day, customers. Just to give you an idea of why there's no one-size-fits-all, I'm in here somewhere. These are just some of the things, or some of the customers we've had over the past months. Um, and this is, I think, why we all do it. So we have school children, we have multiple wheelchair users, we have daredevils in a hot air balloon, we have people who can still wake, make a few steps, we have people going to the Zermatt. And this is why we cannot fit, at this moment, at this moment in time, everything in one package, and there's no one size fits all. So I hope this picture gives you some inspiration to think about collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. Uh, yeah. It was a very clear story, and if I think back of it, it's, uh, there's a lot of frustration still. <laughs> and that is, I can agree in that. Uh, but there are also a lot of good intentions. So we have to yeah, bring them together and opportunities. And also that's why collaboration so yeah. is so important. And also one thing that um, I agree with you is that our customers and customers are our clients, are very important, are coming from all parts of the society, have different disabilities, and within the disability, a lot of grades. So our knowledge needs to be high yeah. to serve them, and we have to share that. So that one and one is three. I think you're right. Yeah. So, Veronique, we go to you. Okay. Listen to your story. Okay, sure, yeah. I will just shortly introduce myself with a, a few slides. We'll go quickly if it's uh, working. Uh, oh no! Wait. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah. So, okay. <laughs> uh, so my name is uh, Veronique Maat. I'm uh, from the Netherlands, and in 2010 I started the inbound tour operator Accessible Travel Netherlands, uh, aiming to make the Netherlands a more des a more accessible destination. Um, yeah. Um, what we've been doing from the beginning is create uh, tailor-made accessible experiences um, and provide a holiday uh, uh, in order for people to don't have to worry about anything when they're here, uh, when they're in the Netherlands. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, to make sure that from the beginning to the end, the journey is accessible. From the book booking, we make it easy. We provide them with the information. And when they are in the Netherlands, um, our goal is to make everything run smoothly. And uh, in order to uh, do that, we have created uh, partnerships with suppliers. And it took us quite a while to find the right suppliers and the right tour guides and to train the tour guides in order to provide this uh, smooth customer journey. Um, because you have to, you need to create a good understanding between the supplier and um, the, yeah, you need, they need to know what, what, what is important. Um, so yeah, we uh, organize accessible hotel rooms, we deliver mobility equipment, uh, we provide care assistance if needed in the hotel, um, private accessible taxi transfers and representative services. Um, and we can do it all together or just separate and um, our clients are they either come directly to us or we work with travel agents from other countries from the US from Europe uh, we are basically like the the local specialist in the Netherlands and if people want to go to combine the Netherlands with Belgium or Germany we can organize that as well and if they want to go further away like uh, combine Amsterdam with 
uh, visit to Prague or to Barcelona or to Italy, we go to the local agents out there. So, um, um, so in the Netherlands itself, we uh, organize accessible shore excursions with different teams, um, and we have ports in Amsterdam, Rotterdam, and Aimuiden. So we offer the shore excursions at all those locations, and they are like the teams are uh, pretty uh, standard. Uh, also, what other travelers want. So we don't. We try to create the programs that the people are looking for when they come to the Netherlands, um, and we look at how we can make those. Uh, as accessible as possible, and then in the end, when we have a booking from a specific client, we custom make it, so we look at their specific needs. Um, so, short excursions in Rotterdam as well. Um, um, for the national market, but also sometimes international, we create accessible beach experiences, uh, power kiting, uh, uh, enjoying the beach with an electric wheelchair, painting workshops. Um, we also offer accessible river, cruise, river cruises throughout Europe. Um, there are just two boats in the Netherlands uh, or in Europe that are fully accessible, and those we offer to uh, international clients. Uh, yeah, we offer cross-country tours, uh, combining Germany, the Netherlands, and Belgium. And um, yeah, mobility equipment hire, which I mentioned before. Uh, so uh, up till now, we have really focused on. Uh, making journeys accessible for people with uh, physical limitations and people with visual limitations. So that's what really we are specialized in. Um, in conclusion, we offer an easy booking process, time taken off other people's hands, the clients or other tour operators, uh, smooth customer journey and happy travelers. Um, so now I'm going to give the word back to Gerda. Thank you, Veronique. Also, your story was very clear. I know Veronique since long, and uh, I can tell you that she's very, very dedicated in what she's doing, and that's the reason also with her, I can learn from her that one and one is three, uh, because I don't know that much from the Netherlands. I'm more specialized in abroad. And, uh, but also, um, I believe in that the Netherlands can learn from, especially from Spain, what you do here. Yes, I think so too. Um, we go to uh, to Malik and listen to his story in Spanish. Mm. So. Muy bien. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Malik Alcarea. Soy el director de de la división de cruceros del grupo Aboris, encargado del desarrollo del proyecto cruceros a nivel nacional. El grupo Aboris. Eh, Controla entre España y Portugal casi 800 agencias de viajes, 740 en España y 60 en Portugal. La compañía portuguesa que está por ahí, Silvia me parece que es. Hola. Eh, desde este momento y desde este día yo creo que tan, tan, tan interesante y tan donde hemos escuchado eh, actuaciones prácticamente de todos los actores que tienen que ver con, con lo que nos ha unido aquí, que es hacer de, de, de los cruceros un producto accesible para todo el mundo eh, y donde más o menos todos, cada uno en su, en su medida, ha venido a contar con todos mis respetos su historia. ¿no? Las ciudades, los puertos, las navieras, las, los operadores turísticos eh, y cada uno en su medida está haciendo lo que él cree que es lo más correcto y, y en algunos casos están haciendo grandísimos esfuerzos. Luego ven, ha venido Marian en, representa, en representación de las agencias de viajes y nos ha dado un golpe de realidad, ¿no? nos ha dicho que estamos muy lejos todavía, eh, de, creo que es lo que he entendido, de decir que eh, los cruceros hoy día, a nivel global, eh, podemos decir que son un producto accesible para los, los clientes que tienen necesidades de movilidad especial. Y yo creo que ese es el, el, el dato con quienes tenemos que quedar a esta, a esta, a esta altura del día, y eh, cuando nos vayamos al hotel y nos miremos al espejo cada uno y decimos, oye, pues he tenido una actuación eh, fantástica, correcta, bien, he dicho lo que tenía que decir, lo políticamente correcto. Eh, y bueno, y al día siguiente, mañana, cada uno eh, a seguir haciendo lo que hemos hecho hasta el momento, que eh, cada uno eh, atender su negocio y las personas que necesiten eh, algún tipo de, de atención especial 
eh, me, me perdonáis la expresión, que se busque la vida. En línea general, no culpo a nadie, todos somos responsables. Y si estamos aquí, en este congreso, el cual yo felicito a Tatiana eh, y, a todo, y a todos los, los miembros de, de la organización y, eh, por, por, por esta oportunidad, yo creo que es para que nos comprometamos. Eh, nos comprometamos a hacer algo más de lo que hemos hecho hasta el momento. Yo, en representación de las agencias de viajes, modestamente he dicho que tenemos 800 puntos de venta, 740 en España y 60 en Portugal, B de Travel Brand, me ofrezco a ayudar a Tatiana a partir de la semana que viene. Yo creo que lo primero que tenemos que hacer es sentarnos. Sentarnos y hablar en serio. Y cada uno que diga qué es lo que puede hacer para que eh, los cruceros sean eh, un producto sostenible, accesible y que una persona, in, independientemente de, de, de las necesidades que tenga de, de movilidad, se encuentre cómodo desde el, día que sale, desde el momento en que sale de su casa hasta que vuelva a su casa. Porque la realidad yo creo que es un poco diferente. Eh, hay barcos, hay navieras que dicen no, es que nosotros estamos preparados para recibir eh, eh, todo tipo de, de, de pasajeros. Significa, si eso significa tener cuatro cabinas eh, preparadas para, para, para recibir pasajeros con necesidades especiales, yo creo que estamos un poco lejos. Incluso aquellos barcos o aquellas navieras que, que están muy preparados y pueden tener muchas cabinas eh, eh, preparadas para recibir gente con necesidades especiales, luego cuando te mueves por el barco, en términos de salones, en la discoteca, en los restaurantes, en los baños, en la entrada y salida de los barcos, eh, te encuentras con, con, con situaciones complicadas. Yo creo que esto eh, es un trabajo no, no para resolverlo, eh, en un año ni en dos, yo creo que tiene que ser un proyecto de futuro, porque eh, o se ponen de acuerdo todos los, los actores o no tenemos nada que hacer. Es decir, una naviera, como el caso de mi amigo Agustín Casada, que representa a Cunar y Princes. Eh, Cunar, yo estuve hace dos o tres semanas, que le he dicho antes, cuando estábamos tomando el bocadillo, que lo iba a contar, una naviera que internamente puede estar muy preparada para recibir clientes con necesidades especiales, llega a un puerto, hace una escala, y yo he sido testigo porque fui a ver el barco que no lo conocía y la verdad es que veo una situación muy incómoda. Muy incómoda para un pasajero que eh, bajaba en silla de ruedas y, y el tramo desde, el puerto de, o sea, desde la puerta de, de, de desembarque hasta, hasta digamos, eh, eh, donde le estaba esperando un taxi, pues ha sido un poco dramático porque era una, una escalera muy inclinada, tenía una especie de barreras la, la, la escalera y lo venían bajando, para que no se caiga, lo venían bajando con, con, digamos, hacia marcha atrás, y el señor se cogió un cabreón morrocotudo con toda la razón del mundo. Todo el trabajo que se hizo a bordo del barco, se lo cargaron en un puerto en cinco minutos. Entonces, ¿qué quiero decir con esto? Que eh, ya no digamos, ya han hablado todos para no repetir, como decía la compañera, para no repetir lo mismo, el tema de las excursiones, el tema del transporte en las ciudades, eh, autobuses, eh, las ciudades en sí, porque estoy hablando de un caso de una ciudad donde estaba atracado un barco de Cunar. Entonces, yo creo que la única, la única, si realmente creemos en esto, eh, la única solución es que nos sentemos. Y yo, como, como representante de alguna manera de los, de los clientes, eh, a través de mis, de mis 800 puntos de venta, yo me ofrezco con mis compañeros Rafa de Costa, Agustín de, de Mundo Mar, mi antigua compañera Raquel de, de Bulmandur y también Virginia, que le gusta estar en todos los saraos, que nos ayude también, eh, a sentarnos lo antes posible y también Intercruises, ¿por qué no?, que está aquí, que ya gestionan muchísimos puertos, a ver qué, cómo lo podemos hacer, porque no olvidemos que si cada uno hace su trabajo, pero si ese trabajo no llega a la agencia de viajes, que realmente es la que está en contacto con el cliente, donde el cliente va y le dice yo quiero hacer un crucero por el Báltico. La agencia de viajes tiene que tener la información lo más completa posible. Dice, no, no, que se busque la vida. San Google falla muchísimo. Es un santo, pero falla mucho. La agencia de viajes en este momento, para lo que estamos hablando, solamente puede acudir a San Google. El resto, no hay una plataforma, no hay un centro de información donde podamos volcar la información, las empresas de autobuses, las empresas de taxis, las de excursiones, las navieras y las agencias de viajes, 
en lo que yo me puedo comprometer, no represento a todos, es a formar a nuestra gente, también que lo necesitamos. Yo soy el director de desarrollo, pero también soy el responsable máximo de la compañía en términos de formación. Y nosotros ya lo estamos haciendo. Dentro de BD Trail Brand hay una, hay una sección, hay un área, que es una antigua agencia de viajes que se llama Viajes 2000, que se encarga expresamente de organizar los viajes para personas con algún tipo de, de necesidad de movilidad especial. En este caso, mi amiga Raquel no lo ha dicho, pero Viajes 2000 fue el que organizó el congreso del 2018, donde estuvieron más de 1.700 personas con algún tipo de necesidad de movilidad especial. Por lo tanto, repito e insisto que cuando queráis, amigos, compañeros, yo creo que nos tenemos que sentar y tenemos un reto por delante maravilloso, que si lo hacemos bien, vamos a ganar no solamente dinero, que es para lo que estamos, sino ganaremos en reputación, que yo he visto auténticos milagros cuando tú haces tu, tu trabajo bien y una persona que, que necesitaba un... Simplemente que se cumpla el contrato, porque tú has firmado un contrato con él y él cuando hace un crucero y baja tiene que quedar satisfecho como cualquier otro cliente. Si nos sentamos y ponemos eh, negro sobre blanco, a lo mejor en un corto tiempo podemos, podemos empezar a recoger eh, los rendimientos y el, y, el, y, el, y el mejor de todos y el que más satisfacción produce que es, es la reputación. Para mí la responsabilidad social, cuando tú eh, cumples con, con, con tu deber, que es de dar a tu cliente, independientemente de su condición, el servicio que espera de ti. Thank you, Malik. Thank And you. I hear myself. That's of course because of this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, very good that you dare to shine the light on this, because I agree that um, we have to talk about this. We think all, and I, and I assume that we all think that we're doing good in our own parts, but there is something missing. The link between all these... What do you call that? Schakels. Schakels. Change. change, yeah, the change. It must be one chain. And it, it reminds me of uh, the airport of Schiphol, uh, in Amsterdam, I was invited there once to speak about like a, a smoother way of traveling with uh, with a plane, and they were so happy that I was on that table and that I dared to say what went wrong because every everybody on that table thought that he did good, and I think and I believe that they did good, but everything went wrong. We never had many complaints like five years ago. And now, after five years, I can tell you that it's slowly, slowly increasing, but we have to stay in touch. So thank you for this wakening up. And also, um, I'd like to join. So um, we go to you, uh, Joan. You may introduce yourself. Yeah. After the video, or uh, después del video? Con el... Ah, perfecto. Pues vemos un vídeo donde presentamos lo que hacemos y luego esto.
esto. Soy Joan Gannau, cofundador y responsable de BCN for All, Barcelona for All Needs. El vídeo lo hicimos cortito, así espero que nadie se haya dormido dadas las horas. Y no, bueno, lo hicimos cortito y pasa rápido para ceñirnos al minuto 30 del, del guión que nos pidieron. Básicamente no repetiré todo lo que se expone allí, os explicaré nuestro caso, nuestro porqué y... Y lo enlazaré con lo que nos reúne aquí en cuanto a los destinos accesibles, en cuanto a los cruceros. Nosotros surgimos, entre otras cuestiones, pero surgimos eh, después de constatar una de las, uno de los datos que os mostrábamos aquí, que es que Barcelona, pese a ser la gran plaza donde todo el mundo la reconoce como muchísimo turismo, muchísimos millones y millones, vimos que no llegaba al 4%, apenas lo rozaba, la cantidad de turistas mayores de 64 años que pernoctaban en la ciudad. Aquí, ligando con el tema de los cruceros, los cruceristas no cuentan como pernoctaciones, pero la gente que pernocta, que pasa una sola noche, no llegaba al 4%. Entonces, en base a eso, en base a una serie más de análisis, pero ese elemento fue determinante, vimos que es importante poder poner en marcha alguna iniciativa por nuestra parte para poder ayudar o poner un grito de arena a revertir eso, ¿no? Porque aquí también ligo con lo que esta mañana comentaba Javier García de, de CEOMA, que más allá del turismo accesible, que a nosotros nos gusta más llamarlo inclusive, eh, inclusivo, eh, un poco también a raíz de lo que Mirce me apuntaba antes, ¿no? de, de ese futuro donde no haya que poner accesible como etiqueta, sino que todo sea estándar, pero más allá de la accesibilidad o de la inclusividad, el, se nos tiñe o viene en ciernes eh, lo que también se llama con otras etiquetas, lo que también se llama el silver tourism, ¿no? detrás de la, de la silver economy, detrás del cambio demográfico que, que viene ya desde hace muchos años y que es una constatación para los próximos, vienen, vienen y deberían poder venir públicos mayores de 64 años y de 70 años, poblaciones que ahora a punto de cumplirse la jubilación del baby boom, y poblaciones que están viajando en otros lugares en Europa y que, en nuestro caso, en Barcelona y en Cataluña, vemos que adolece en su presencia. Entonces, nosotros no somos una agencia de viajes, no somos un teleoperador. Nuestro core business es la atención personal. Atención personal mediante acompañamiento, turístico personal, que llamamos, mediante acompañamiento a hacer actividades. Atención personal mediante todo tipo de cuidados y, y atenciones y asistencias en cuanto a dependencia y autonomía, en todos los casos que eso puede ceñirse tanto para gente con algún tipo de discapacidad, reconocida o no, como para gente mayor. Y buscamos eh, solucionar cuestiones muy básicas, que a veces llevamos necesidades especiales a cuestiones que son muy básicas, eh, solucionarlas en destino, hacer que en el alojamiento donde ellos estén puedan tener cubiertas las mismas cosas que tienen cubiertas a, allá donde viven. Para este caso, incluso en el tema de los cruceros, nos encontramos que, pese a no haberlo previsto, nos empezaron a pedir eh, acompañamientos para cruceros. Y perdonadme que se me seca la boca. Entonces, en caso de cruceros circulares, empezamos a acompañar desde el embarque, incluso a veces uno o dos días previos, asistimos y acompañamos a personas, a parejas, a familias, a realizar todo un crucero con Norwegian, con MSC, con varias compañías ya lo hemos hecho, para nuestra sorpresa, pero también para el agrado de poder, como entre nuestros, entre nuestros fines está, el poder pensar en esa gente que necesita una ayuda y una asistencia y que o bien pueden permitirse un acompañante desde origen, con todo sobrecoste que eso significa de un billete más, una habitación más, o bien sin, sin ayuda como la nuestra no podrían hacer unas vacaciones porque no, no contarían o no cuentan con, con la posibilidad de encontrar servicios así. ¿no? Entonces, básicamente, ligando también a lo que comentaba Malik, nosotros en nuestros primeros cruceros tuvimos una, un accidente. Tuvimos el acceso al baño de una persona mayor, una señora inglesa de 92 años, eh, todo ir acompañada, todo ir sujetada, se nos cayó y tuvo una fractura de esas eh, que solo pensar a recordar la foto que me enviaron da como escalofríos. Pero porque también creo importante, como tú apuntabas, Mary, que es, es bueno contarlo todo. Y es bueno contar que pese a que un cámara te pueda estar eh, adaptado, puede ser accesible, la accesibilidad también muchas veces es sobre el papel y la accesibilidad muchas veces no está testada con usuarios, con personas eh, reales. 
Y que también hay que pensar en esto. En este caso, esta persona, Bárbara, no tenía ningún tipo de discapacidad reconocida, pero tenía 92 años. Que no por tener 92 años debes tener alguna discapacidad, pero sí tienes unas necesidades, unos ritmos eh, distintos. Y básicamente, el dejar un poco de tiempo a mi compañero y luego poder seguir con las preguntas o poder ver las preguntas que nos plantea Gerta. Gracias. Thank you, Joan. Um, again, the same mistake, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Joan. Um, you uh, told us that it's very important to take our role, in our cases, as social and economic in inspirators. Inspirators, I say, yeah. And that um, uh, inclusion is more important and accessible, if accessibility must be a standard. So I agree, but I think we all do agree in this. Tengo el micro, no tengo el micro. Gracias por mencionarlo, Yerta. Yo no no he seguido el vídeo, pero uno de los puntos importantes para nuestro nuestra puesta en marcha, nuestras misiones, ese doble impacto, ¿no? El el impacto social y el impacto económico que pueda haber en la oportunidad detrás de la de la silver economy, del silver tourism. No ya está, perdona. Te contestaba. No, I'm sorry. I stood up way too early. I'm sorry. I guess it's my time now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I apologize. Vittorio. Hey, so good evening, and I'm very excited to be here, to be invited in this Congress, and I think that we here are making the first step of a process that will impact millions of people. I want to stress that, because it seems that we just talk about our little island in the ocean, of our despair at trying to assess these this, uh, thematics. But I think that most of all, thanks to the representative of the business, this can impact a lot. So thank you for being here. Um, uh, Cosi for You, yes. Cosi for You is a tour operator based in Naples, Campania, southern Italy, and is specialized on income, incoming. Uh, so we try to attract people from all over the world to our beautiful region. Um, the thing is, um, we, uh, uh, Campania is not a, a, a nice place for people with disabilities. I don't know if you've ever been to Naples. Uh, it's a beautiful city, but it lacks everything, even for normal tourists, you can only imagine for people with disabilities. So there are no public transportation. Uh, it's an, it has an ancient street structure with almost no ramps and facilities. So before trying to attract people to Naples, we have to figure it out how to actually make them go there. And uh, so uh, in the end, we um, realized that only uh, providing a comprehensive package, touristic package, we could assess this problem. So we not only we organize the accommodations, the transportation, and uh, all, uh, uh, all the services that uh, uh, people with a, disability, with a disability can need, but only with guides specifically trained to uh, guide groups uh, with special needs. So uh, these are our first our first uh, guidelines, okay, they seem buzzwords. We heard today inclusivity, accessibility, culture, and quality maybe 10 times each today, maybe inclusivity a bit more. I'm, I'm going to start with that. Uh, because inclusivity, as largely explained today, it doesn't mean only uh, inclusion uh, of all the types of disability, but also inclusion of people that can't afford now this kind of tours. This is something that's my long-term dream, because with COSI, uh, we are actually uh, making tailor-made uh, packages that have a cost. In, uh, it's inevitable. But my long-term dream is trying to provide people with all uh, the economical capabilities to be able to travel the world. And that's connected to culture, because traveling is getting culture and getting better. Even stepping outside uh, your door, it means that you are a better person afterwards. And, and this is one of the, our main guidelines. Then, of course, accessibility. What does accessibility mean? Accessibility means we are guarantor of 
every place we bring our uh, clients. So we map all the places, and we are sure 100% based on EU regulation that that place is accessible before bringing people in. And then that brings us to quality. Uh, I think that quality needs to permeate all the chain, and I think that's something that is lacking because everyone has, uh, if, if you really want to make something out of this convention, we should organize a network. Something, and I do agree with uh, Mr. Malik, because uh, unless we really create something out of this, 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 we are just spotting en empty words. So basically, we should uh, try to create some standards, quality standards among us that can be uh, respected by the members of this network, so we can provide really um, uh, the services that even big business can lean upon, because else we are not credible as even a smaller player. We need to be credible. Um, just, okay, uh, we have a fleet of uh, three buses, two cars, and we provide for free all these facilities for our customers in all the Campania region and south. We are expanding actually uh, in the center Italy to Rome. Uh, and that will be another great challenge. But in the end, something misses from this slide, uh, and it's the knowledge. We have our hands dirty in the problems. We face every day the, uh, the, 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 the questions and the, the, the needs of our customers. And we could, we could meet these needs only uh, Training, 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 all the times. Myself, I try to understand how to, to, to design with my colleagues the best tours. And uh, I, we organized um, uh, training for our guides and for our drivers. Because everyone in the chain needs to be trained to better uh, help people with disabilities enjoy their travel. Um, I want to say a thing about um, the cruise business and the, um, the disabled, um, the accessible tourism business in general. Uh, for cruises, uh, for example, in Naples, I again agree with Mr. Malik. After uh, uh, after the tourists go out of the um, land uh, in in in, uh, in the port, there is nothing there. Uh, maybe often they uh, use private taxi or people that are not professional. And this uh, really uh, destroys all the experience of the tourist. Uh, but we are, we are working, trying to, uh, to, to, to provide you something that, that even big business can, uh, can use. Um, in the end, uh, let me be a bit uh, sentimental. I'm sorry for that, but... I promised. This is my mother. She uh, is the soul and heart of uh, our tour operator. Uh, she should be here, but for uh, health issues she can't. But uh, she is really the soul and the heart, and that brings me back to, to the motivations. It's true, business needs to make a profit. I understand perfectly that. But we have a responsibility, and business have a responsibility to live up to that. And I beg you, really, uh, we can impact the lives of millions of people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vittorio. Also very clear what you were explaining us all, and uh, let us not be that island in the ocean. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, yeah, again, the words that we all use to cooperate. And... Um, Although Naples will be a challenge, uh, yes. please attack us all. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's one thing. I saw that I only have five minutes, and I also have four questions. So <laughs> I was trying to see what the best one is. Um, but maybe it's good to know that all these discussions can go on uh, also tonight or later on. Or maybe we have to set up a new meeting next year or whatever. The questions will be there, I think. But uh, one of them was because things are changing. Like when I started in uh, 2004, um, there was hardly no one who was in this business. 
business, a couple of them. I do the independent travel, of the uh, individual travel, I mean, so not the group travel. And um, now, like, like 10 years ago, in the main industry, the main tourism industry, nobody was really interested in cooperating. Like, it was too much hassle, um, too much money, too much time, so they let us do the, the work. Now, and I think also because of the new law, uh, looking at the UN is, uh, and to the U AU, um, also the, the bigger tour operators like TUI wants to go into accessible tourism because now they think it, it sounds good, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the environment, so we have to go to the sustainable tourism. And then together we heard it this morning, with, uh, it's a good marketing tool, sustainable tourism and yes. accessible <laughs> tourism. But we did all the weeding. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'd like to know from all of you, <laughs> what will our roles be in the, in the future, purely ambassadors? Or uh, are we going to be involved? Mm -hmm. Can I start with you, Mr. Malik? Muy bien. Yo, yo voy a poner un ejemplo. Este es el primer congreso. Espero que eh, de unos cuantos más. Pero no me gustaría que este congreso le pasara lo mismo que pasa, por ejemplo. Yo llevo eh, 36 años en el mundo del turismo, entre estudiante y, y, y trabajador. Y, y en los últimos años he, he dejado de ir a, a, a todo lo que se celebra en Fitur, que tiene que ver con, con el mundo del turismo, con, los, con la formación, con porque eh, llegó un momento que se repetía, o sea, prácticamente tú no pod podías dejar de asistir a un, a, un, a un evento y sabías perfectamente lo que se iba a contar. Es lo mismo que se contó el año pasado y el otro, y el otro, y el otro, y el otro. Se repiten los problemas, no se dan pasos. Entonces, encantado en que ya nos convoques para el próximo congreso, eh, y, y, pero a mí eh, sería muy feliz si en el próximo congreso venimos y decimos qué pasos hemos dado. O sea, ¿Dónde, estamos, ¿Dónde estábamos en el 2019 y dónde estamos en el 2020? Si no es así, yo no vengo. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like also to know the meaning of a tutorial. Yeah, I guess uh, we need to be involved. I guess, uh, that's basically what I'm trying to do with, in, in a little space with my cousin. I think that When we talk about uh, inclusivity, and uh, as, as I said before, it's, it's a long-term dream, because as I see the situation now, uh, there are still not in place many... Oh, I'm, uh, that's what was with yeah, me. That's, I was hearing myself. <laughs> <though> I was... <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's why something went wrong. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's... Uh, oh, that's better. So... Um, As the situation is now, this is just the first step. Maybe in the future, in five years, maybe we could uh, make really accessible tourism uh, inclusive for everyone. Uh, I know perfectly the costs of uh, um, a tourist package, and it's on average, in the best situation, 20%, 30%, at least we, we try to, to, to reduce our margin as much as possible. Um, than a normal uh, touristic yeah. package. Yeah. So in the end, I guess, um, it's, it's all about little steps. Let's create the network, let's, let's um, try to create volumes, because only with volumes we can uh, really reduce our costs, and then in the end maybe we can reach this, this goal. But it will take time. It's, I don't think it's a short-term goal, it's a long-term goal, and this here is the first step. I agree. <laughs> And you, Miriam? I completely agree. Uh, the question was if we can be ambassadors or are no, we going to be involved? Yeah. I are think we, we need to be both. Yeah. Or Excellent. I don't know why we need to make a choice. I think if you are involved in accessible... You don't have to. You, are. you don't have to, eh? You no. don't have to. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that um, it would, it's a very good uh, point to make tourism inclusive. Uh, meaning that the mainstream tourism uh, providers, tour operators, travel agents should have, uh, people should be able to go to any travel agency to book their holiday. That's yes. the core idea. 
Uh, currently, that's not possible because the mainstream travel agents don't have this specific knowledge. Uh, we have created that specific knowledge amongst us. We are helping clients, but they always need to go to sub other agents and need to s do more searching. And I think it would be very nice in the future if there could be an inclusive tourism industry. But I do think that definitely those tourism, prof the mainstream tourism industry is going to need advisors and people maybe to uh, cooperate with, yeah. to be able to offer that quality and uh, improve the products and, well, yeah. And That's I, think I think I, I agree with you, uh, Veronique, and also what you said, uh, with Vittorio, it's, it's just to start. I mean, even though we work maybe for 15 or longer uh, years yeah. in this business, it's still a sort of playground where we're in. The industry is much older than we are, like we are older, but in, I mean in, the, in what we do. So it's something that we have to find out, and I'm so happy that we can share. Like, if, if I think back on... 2005 till 2010, I knew nobody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> only the, the accommodation I, uh, that I visited. And now we can share so more, many more things. And it's good that we can offer our clients more destinations, um, even though it's a, it's a cruise or uh, it's an accommodation in New York or whatever, but uh, it must be a wider range, I think. I think I, sorry. Yeah, no. no, I forgot you. No, oh. don't worry. It's a um, punto. Añadir un punto respecto a lo de los próximos años, que en nuestro super video, como pasaba tan rápido, no se ha podido aprovechar. Y yo luego no he hecho énfasis, pero para mí es importante en cuanto a lo que se avecina. ¿no? En la próxima década, además de la, bueno, de la resabida, revolución digital, los grandes totems que la gente habla que nos va a cambiar el mundo, a nivel del turismo, ya hace dos años, tres, la OMT, la Organización Mundial de Turismo, apuntó a, a, una, bueno, a doblarse el volumen turístico mundial en los próximos cinco años, que es una cifra que ha aparecido muchas veces escondida, pero que se constata y se, y se corrobora como tal. Y esto junto con el envejecimiento, envejecimiento poblacional, yo creo que no va a dejar lugar a que el sector turístico se adapte y abrace un tipo de turismo distinto, o quien lo haga sea quien reciba ese turismo, con lo cual a veces eh, los que, al contrario de Malik, los que llevamos poco tiempo en el sector, sí que hemos visto que, por desgracia, hay un comportamiento a veces muy cortoplacista y en una cosa así yo creo que va, va a generar una ventaja competitiva importante, quien sepa ver todos estos indicadores que eh, no son, digamos, secretos de Estado, ¿no? el envejecimiento de la población, el, la, el crecimiento exponencial en los próximos años del turismo mundial y cómo hay un público con más poder adquisitivo y con más tiempo para viajar que en toda su vida, porque están ya jubilados, al que hay que atender de una forma distinta que se atiende al, a la población en general. Y por ese sentido, nosotros, como tú apuntabas lo de si embajadores o viéndonos envueltos en un ecosistema distinto, nosotros nos sentimos a veces como early adopters, ¿no? nos sentimos como, habiendo empezado como muy temprano, encontrándonos un sector receptivo como muy acostumbrado a tener mucha demanda y cuando la pelas o le hablas del impacto económico, de oportunidad, oportunidad de negocio, no, no la ven. Quizás ven más lo que antes decías tú como de marketing o como de responsabilidad social y quizás por allí lo ven más, pero realmente la oportunidad de, de mercado está y que la sepa aprovechar tendrá una ventaja competitiva difícil luego de, de igualar por otros agentes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And, and, and thank you also um, uh, for your openness. It is not a correct English word, I guess so, but um, uh, I think we had a very open discussion about this subject and we can go on for an hour, Tatiana, but uh, we will quit because really, um, yeah, there's, there's another group coming after us. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you.